I don't, know, I don't know how else to put it. That she she literally has given up everything to help me. You know, she does such a tremendous job with our three children. She's the most amazing mom I've ever seen. Um, and you know, for me, it's just she she makes sure that I don't have anything to worry about except eating, sleeping, and training. And um, you know, as a distance runner, so much of it is about being disciplined, live a very basic life. It's just hard day after hard day of training and, and letting your body recover and. You know, she really does everything for me. And, um, you know, I, I really couldn't have done it without her. She's just been such a blessing, you know, ever since she came into my life. And, um, and I just, I love her so much. And uh, I, I just couldn't be more thankful to have such an amazing wife. Not much. I mean, just that we love each other. You know, she's, she says she's so proud of me. And I thank her, obviously, for, for everything that she does. But really, you know, it's a... Uh, it's just a special moment, you know, there's not really, you don't need to say a lot of words with you know, the connection that we have. And um, you know, the one thing we did say, though, they're looking forward to having some fun. Because <laughs> um, I've been on, you know, such lockdown as far as being able to do anything. And, you know, we're, we're going to stick around the city for a little bit and, and have some fun with our kids. You know, they're, they're pumped to see dinosaur bones, that's what they keep talking about. So we're going to go to the Field Museum and, and do that one of these days. But uh, yeah, it's just, it, it's going to be fun, and I'm looking forward to having some downtime where I can just relax and, and be with them and just do some things I'm not able to do when I'm in full training mode. Larry. Galen, when you made your move, it was like surgery. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, what are you telling yourself when you're running a 431 mile and a 430 mile? Um, I was praying. I really wasn't looking at the clock at all. You know, I just... Um, more of a feel thing at that point that you have to kind of ration out your energy but you want to keep the pressure on and um, I was really just praying those last two miles that's all I was doing was you know saying my Hail Marys, Our Fathers, Glory Peace, um, pray the Rosary so that's something I, I learned from Alberto um, you know in one of his races he told me he probably doesn't like this story but uh, you know that's that's what he said he did in the Comrades Marathon you know last little bit and um, that's something that I've I've always tried to do in marathons too, um, and uh, you know it's just such a keeps my mind at ease and um, kind of takes your mind off the pain. And so that that's really what I was doing the last couple of miles was just praying, trying to stay relaxed, you know, and just giving glory to God. Sure. And before you made your move when you turned on your mission again, really from 30k on, practically Abel and, and Stephen Sandlow at that time, they were ramping up the pace. Sometimes even, but particularly let's say at 35, yeah, there was a really hard surge. At one point, I mean, on one hand, you wanted to be patient, but how did you cover those wounds and stay patient at the same time? I mean, really just wanted to stay behind everybody and, and just draft and relax. You know, I, I kind of joked around. It's like they don't call it the Windy City for nothing. And, uh, so that was a big thing for me, it was, was just drafting and, and staying behind. And again, there was no need to be in front unless I was going to start pushing. And so there are a few times I was a little anxious, but I really just tried to stay behind and, and concentrate on relaxing as much as possible. And, um, you know, I definitely felt those surges. Uh, they were definitely hard. Um, but really, it's about just staying within yourself and, and just gearing up for that move you're going to make. And, you know, I felt pretty good for, for most of the race, um, and I think, again, it's just my training prepared me so well for this that um, I really was just, in my mind, everything was saving up for that big move that I was going to make, or a big move that someone else was going to make. So, obviously, he was the lot covering that, but really, it was just about saving energy so I had enough to go when I, would, when I did. So. Congratulations, Dronesh, you've arrived at your first marathon win. You've done everything over 10,000 meters and 5,000 meters. What are your goals from here on out? Is it the world record? Is it world championships? Is it Olympic gold? Malata ya buzo wudu dronoch na shan fello. Lani tulluku na garzarish zi ma shan fello. Lamini yame jamai rai no sa shan fello. Sustanya marathon no. Lendal lai wet amfatan saat ni rotkut. Gilla ma shan fal char kum wet amfatan saat fat atlet na beruna. He wudu dronoch ma shan fello wet amres bulu niar kaum wala ya wudu trakalim malas. Lai marathon no meroto. 
እግዚአብሔር ከፈቀደ የራሴ ስፈት አሳአት እና ያለም ሪከርድ ያቀላል አይደለም ግን ሞክራሎ በፔስ ሜከር Yes it's true I've won many races um but the big thing for me here is to win because this is my first marathon win it's my third marathon but the first one that I've won in London I ran a very fast time but I was not able to win so I'm very happy to win here I'm not going to be going back to the track I'm just going to be running marathons after this and god willing I hope to lower my personal best and also I hope to tackle the world record with pacemakers Okay we have one more